Hi there and welcome to today's vlog. As always, I'm very grateful whenever you uh, find time to share these few minutes with me. So thank you. There's been uh, much praise, rightly so, I think, for the way that the uh, rollout of the immunisation against uh, COVID has been uh, handled. Uh, millions and millions of people have already had their injection. Uh, in fact, uh, Sue and I had a telephone call yesterday from our local GP surgery inviting us to go for our jabs tomorrow. That's at the local uh, leisure centre. So we're going to go along and get our jabs. So that shows, because we've been invited, that the uh, the younger element are now uh, being embraced by this uh, immunisation rollout. Positive signs. So still a, a very frustrating time, isn't it, when we're still in lockdown. And uh, perhaps for many of us, there are issues that we're struggling with. And uh, probably all of us want to uh, get out, have a bit of freedom, but... We've got to be sensible, we've got to do, abide by the rules at the moment. Now, if you watched the last uh, vlog, you might remember that I showed you three objects that I bought years ago for a talk. And I couldn't remember what the talk was, but I made up a little uh, way you could use them. There was uh, three items from a, that you might put in a, a birdcage, a ladder, a swing and a mirror. And I invited any other ideas uh, that you might have to have to link those together and I had a, a great response from a friend a very good friend of ours called Gwen. Gwen was the lady responsible for Sue and I uh, first meeting so we've got a lot to thank her for and she uh, suggested uh, or she, she, she said in her email that she'd immediately thought of the story of, of Jacob's ladder. That's uh, the uh, story of finding Genesis chapter 28 that's where Jacob is uh, Kind of fearful of uh, his brother Jacob and uh, as he dreams he has this vision of a ladder reaching to heaven and Gwen points out that the, for, for Jacob uh, for Jacob that vision of the ladder reaching to heaven was in a sense a real turning point in his life and, and a time when he realized that God was with him I think then he says uh, this place is he calls it Bethel uh, God was me that here and I didn't realise it. So he met with God, a turning point in his life. But even after that, his life was kind of ups and downs, or you might call it swings uh, back and forth. So it wasn't plain sailing, even when he had this new real realisation of God with him. And uh, he wrestles with, with God in that moment. And uh, Gwen says perhaps it was when he wrestled with God, he had that close encounter with God that he actually came face to face with who he, Jacob, really was. And uh, when his brother Esau uh, forgave him, that confirmed uh, what God had revealed to him. And uh, Gwen ends by saying, I guess we need many encounters with God before we see a little of the person we really are. That's very insightful. So uh, I share that with you. Uh, thanks, Gwen, for uh, that response. Now, I'm sure you've heard of a gentleman, unless you're quite young and uh, you might not, but most of you will have heard of a gentleman called Engelbert Humperdinck. That's not his real name, that's his stage name. He uh, is now in his 80s, I think, but he has been a world-famous singer and performer. And you may have heard that uh, a few days ago, his wife of many years, Patricia, died. Uh, uh, she con she had had... had Alzheimer's uh, disease for quite a number of years but she'd also recently contracted COVID-19 and sadly she died. I was interested to read a, uh, a report on, online of <coughs> Engelbert's or this situation and Engelbert's response. Let me read some of it to you. The 84 year old star, that's Engelbert, has said he's heartbroken by the loss of his beloved wife, Patricia, who died last night. Engelbert, who just days ago asked for his fans to pray for his wife in her battle with both Alzheimer's and COVID-19, posted a touching tribute on social media to his wife. He posted on Facebook, Dear friends, please forgive the silence after the unbelievable response 
to our plea for prayers. Our family is heartbroken over the loss of my darling wife. Last night she slipped softly away, as if by God's clockwork. The last rites were given just before our usual prayers at the 8pm hour by our nephew, Father Paul. We are so grateful to have him gently lead Patricia through this last chapter with a familiar voice and such love. She was surrounded by our children, uh, Louise, Brad, uh, Jason and with Scott on FaceTime. Her long-time caregivers lovingly helped to make her transition easier on us all. Her earthly limitations no longer hold her down as she is freely running the glorious gardens of heaven, reunited with so many loved ones. We prayed as a family, blessed her with water from Lourdes, and off she went, ushered into the arms of Jesus, with help from the generous, heart-filled prayers from all around the world. And then he finishes by saying, I thank those who reached out in what we now know were her final days and sent energy, love, words of deep connection to a loving God. He will be the ultimate caregiver of peace and love. And it's interesting that those words of Engelbert are so uh, faith-filled, aren't they? So words of, uh, though uh, he and the family are devastated by the loss of Engelbert's wife, um, there's such uh, faith in those words that uh, in the, the reality that he believes that death is not the end. That's what Christians believe, that death isn't the end. But for the person whose faith is in Jesus, it's a doorway to a new life in the very presence of God. So for someone like Patricia, who's suffering from both Alzheimer's and COVID, uh, struggling with life in so many ways, uh, to have that uh, wonderful assurance of a a new life, uh, free from these things and from pain and sadness that we uh, so often seem to experience in our earthly lives. That's a wonderful assurance. In my Bible reading this week, I've, I've been reading through uh, John's Gospel and one of the passages that I read was that uh, occasion where Jesus' friend, Lazarus, dies. In fact, Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sister, send word to Jesus that um, that Lazarus is very seriously ill and they asked Jesus would he come but he 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 stays two more days where he is before he responds and by the time he gets there Lazarus is four days dead and uh, as he's approaching the family home uh, Lazarus's sister Martha comes to him and, and says Lord if you'd been here Lazarus would not have, have died and Jesus says these immortal words to her, uh, John 11, verse 25 and 26. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And then he says to Martha, do you believe this? And that's the question for us, isn't it? That's the question that Jesus addresses each one of us. Do you believe in me? Do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that in me you have eternal life? Do you believe that on the cross I paid for your sins? What's our response? And the his final comment to throw in, and it's an important one really, that that faith in the Bible is not one moment saying, Jesus, I trust in you. Can I have my ticket to heaven? No, faith is an ongoing thing. It's a, a faithfulness that we believe in him. We trust in him, whatever the outward circumstances of our life may be. So whether the our lives are great right now or whether we're really struggling and life seems so hard the call is to press on in faith 
to say, Jesus, I trust in you. May each of us be able to say that now and always. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today.